Ah, yes. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and how to annoy your subscribers within 30 seconds of a video, just keep doing this. Anyway, I'm going to stop doing that and get on with what today's little uh, video is about. Now, I want to test that ESP preamp uh, by pumping it into my interface, just out of shot there, but I can't because I've got no way of connecting it, so I'm going to make a small little cable with clip leads on the end of it just using two pieces of hookup wire just so I can get the output signal to go into the interface. Now the interface is, uses a 6.5 millimeter phone jack I've got a 3.5. Now why you might be asking well it limits it if it's only a 6.5 inch, a uh, 6.5 millimeter rather if it's a 3.5 I can actually just use an adapter yeah you know it's just the choice I went with. It was the cheapest option anyway. It was only like 85 cents for this. So, yeah. I uh, spent a whole $3 on this little escapade this morning. Plus, that build would not be complete without doing my customary sound test. Now, I've got the soldering iron already set up in the background and it's melting the cable as we speak. So, I'll move the cable around. There we go. So, I'll open the phone jack and open the bag of these little alligator clips that I love using. You used to be able to get the ones with the screws on it, but yeah, these ones are solderable. Whatever. Now I've got two pieces of hookup wire, yellow and blue, and I'm going to cut both of them roughly the same length. I only want really about 600 millimeters or something about that. Okay, get a bit of solder off. doesn't need much. In fact that's all I need. And I'll just uh, get that wire out of the way and I'll just trim off the excess overhang here. There we go. And don't worry I haven't forgotten about this but the good thing about this is I haven't got the other end on. I'll just remember to put it on the end before I solder the clips on. And yes, ask me how I know from experience I have done that before I've soldered my lead up like an audio lead like this forgotten to put the uh, protective insulation sheath on it finished all the soldering and realized ah f uh, so I'd have to cut the wire off clean up the connection on at least one of the ends so I could resolder to it and <laughs> hold of the bloody thing. So yeah that's always uh, fun when you mess it up. I try not to cut the actual bit that I don't want to cut. So I'll take the ends of the wires, I'll pass them through the protective condom and I will screw that together. Now what I want to do now is I've got some cable ties, I did have four of them. Oh, one's fallen on the floor of course it has, gravity. Why wouldn't it? I might as well clamp these wires now whilst I'm here. I want to leave an overhang at the other end of about, I don't know, 20 millimeter between the cables so that I can stretch them out. They don't have to be together, you know, permanently. And you may be asking yourself a very valid question. It's like, why am I using hookup wire, wire rather than using say audio shield. Well it's easier to solder clamps and have you know distance between them when using hookup wire. Plus on a short run like this just for testing a quick audio circuit just to verify it works regardless of whether it's picking up noise is all you need. It's just to verify that something is working. It's not supposed to be high quality recording here or anything. It's just to test a circuit. That's why they're called test leads. Okay, sometimes you just have to think outside the box. 
I need something flat. Alright, you'll do. There you go. Oh, f me. Alright, now we can go on to putting the soldering iron away now and testing that this lead works. I should probably verify that we've got continuity between both ends here. That might be a good idea. Okay, so I'll connect one millimeter probe to the uh, alligator clip. We can get this case it's the ground. Yep, continuity. No continuity, so that one works. So we've got a good ground at least. We've got a good ring and no short circuits. Beautiful. Now we can move on to testing that amplifier or that pre-amplifier module, which we'll do just in a few moments. Okay, I've got it connected. It's a bit noisy. This master volume pot doesn't seem to do much. Anyway, the base pot works. The mid pot is working. Treble is doing something. Bright switch works. Now it's into distortion. So it's like it's either full on or full off. I'm not sure what's going now on there. I might have to investigate that master pot because it's not working as it should. Anyway, I'm plugged into the high input right now plug into the low, you can hear there, without touching any of the volume controls, there's a significant drop. Most of this noise is still because this panel is not earth. So let's uh, turn that down. It still distorts. Remove the distortion because it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, well that seems to work alright. Apart from this master volume control doesn't seem to A cut off, it just distorts at the lower end. And it's very, very choppy. That is the 500k, I believe, or I can probably change it to a 50k logarithmic and see if that makes a difference. Uh, just mess around with it. 
Uh, let's try an electric guitar now. I'm sorry about all the buzz. It's probably because it's really close to things like uh, the computer, the power supply itself. Well, the tone control network does what it's supposed to do. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry. <laughs> so that does work okay. Let's uh, turn it right down. I'm going to have to fix that because that's not right. It's almost like it's oscillating. That's on the high input, and that's going to distort the shit out of it. Okay. Drop that down a bit. how that brightness switch really makes a difference. With the brightness off it doesn't sound as top endy if that's a word. It is now. But yes this uh, Elliott Sound Project's uh, guitar preamplifier is working apart from that master volume control. I'm not quite happy with that. Uh, I'll have to study the circuit because I know it comes directly off of this tone control network. So I may try putting a 50k logarithmic pot in because I've got one. Um, and see if that makes a difference. Unless I messed up somewhere, I'm not 100% sure. I may have the wrong pot in there. These may be swapped around. I may have done it wrong. Uh, as I say, I'll pull it apart. And I can't hear myself talk with headphones on. I'll pull it apart and see if that makes a difference. Anyway, I just wanted to test this preamp to see if it actually worked. It does. It's got issues, but I'm sure I can fix them before the final project is finished. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. I'm the Astro30, and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And you can always follow me on Facebook, and you can support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. I always like new Patreons. Anyway, this is the Astro30 saying see ya. Have a great day. That was a complete fail.